Ed Martell here from HealthQuest and the Overhead Athletic Institute. I'm here working with Eric. He's a patient of mine from what, two years ago? Oh uh, yeah. Almost two years ago with a very peculiar throwing motion where he actually dropped his elbow and pushed his arm. He had a tricep injury. This time it's a little bit more medial elbow. We looked at his mechanics. We saw there were some things that he needed to adjust. He was going into supination too late in his acceleration phase. But we're going to do Graston technique. Very effective for what we need to try and accomplish, which is to improve the tissue healing time frame. This is his favorite part. So I'll usually start out with the beveled edge. I'll get him used to the pressure. Now work into the middle of the tricep. Last time it was all lateral tricep, wasn't it? Yeah. It, it was, was more lateral yeah. tricep. So he's made some great modifications to his throwing motion. He's going to Jackson College next year, so he already has a college, a college scholarship. We're just started to notice a little bit of discomfort when he was throwing, so we've been working on it in therapy. Eventually we'll have him go over to the Overhead Athletic Institute and look at things off the mound. But I'll work from medial to lateral. Gradually starting to increase my pressure. You have to be careful because there's that's why it's so important to do the grasping on yourself to see what areas cause more discomfort because you can move a quarter of an inch and it can cause a significant increase in symptoms. So that's why it's very important if you're going to be using grasping to do it or have someone do it on you because you'll feel you, know, you can move more up into the tricep. It doesn't feel good at all. So, so what I want you to do now is I want you to extend and flex. So extend and I'll flex, so I'll have him turn off the tricep by going into active flexion, slower. Makes it even more fun, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. So you can really feel with the grassing tools, I think they call them stethoscopes for soft, soft tissue, and it really does take practice to start to recognize when tissue doesn't have that consistency of regular tissue. So pathological tissue often takes on a different, not only physical presentation, but you can feel it with your, your hands. It's just the consistency of it. it's more like knotted rope. Oh, lost ours. There we go right there. Go ahead again. And now as you spend, you know, a minute, minute and a half working gradually into more and more pressure, a little slower. There we go. So you have to be real careful. The tip of the elbow because it's uncomfortable as heck right there. And then I'll follow that up with just functional massage. We did a video last week with one of our pitchers who had a very unique presentation with elbow varus and hyperextension. So you have to consider what the athlete's built like when you're looking at their mechanics. Because a lot of times you have to borrow movement from other places. So if they don't have full scapular upper rotation or full thoracic mobility, you know, your whole goal is to try and dissipate force throughout the acceleration and deceleration phase to allow them to avoid the stress to the tissue that is pathological. So it takes time. We've worked from different positions in the apex of the throw with Eric here trying to get him to reinforce going into more pronation at the time when he needs it so he doesn't end up putting his elbow in the wrong spot exposing him to excessive valgus stress and it's a process that's why we have specific fixed progressions for a lot of different presentations you know on our video portal we're going to be have we're going to be having um, video analysis coming very soon. We've already got it set up, but we just want to make sure that the system's set up the way that we want it to be so that when athletes do send us their video, we can show them what are the things that we have identified that could potentially be leading to a loss of power and velocity as well as potentially leading to injury. And then from there, we're going to 
offer sp specific fixed progressions to allow athletes to, you know, gradually alter their mechanics and give them a system to try and keep themselves on track. Because, you know, the way that you've thrown your whole life is something that's easy to go back to, and you have to really, really pay close attention and do it perfectly in order to make the changes to where your new throwing motion becomes more natural and something that you don't have to pay attention to. And so with athletes like this, I worked with them before, and as athletes get stronger, they can put much more stress on their tissues. And Eric's already here at what, 89, 90, 91? Yep. So he's, we've identified some things that could potentially be causing him some velocity and it's all about lever arm approximation and elongation at the correct time in the kinematic sequence. So we'll move from here and then we'll go into glenohumeral joint mobs. He's got an entire exercise progression where he's working on his thoracic mobility, scapular mobility, eccentric rotator cuff strength, as well as strengthening all the surrounding structures of the elbow in multiple planes to try and give him the best opportunity to throw without discomfort. So, just another athlete we were want to be, you know, I wanted to talk about the video portal that we'll be having very soon. You can see that on our website at overheadathletics.com. And we're also going to do an abbreviated return to throwing program for patients who are coming out of therapy. You know, the number one reason athletes get re-injured is they return to throwing exactly the way they did prior to their injury regardless of their rotator cuff strength or regardless of how well the physical therapists did their job, you have to make the correct modifications to improve the likelihood that you're going to recover completely. So that's it for today.